Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to Blake's Garage. I got the S52 over here, so I need to get some stuff going on this thing. Uh, we need to get the ECU sent out so we can get this ECU tuned for doing the S52 swap into the 88E30. Now, I wanna go ahead and take the wiring harness off as well because I'm also gonna send that out to Kessel Performance. So they're gonna do the ECU tune for me, this little guy right here, which I can pop off real quick. We'll get that out of the way. Very simple, very easy. Boom. We gotta send that out in the mail to get that programmed properly. It's kind of heavy. This stuff over here, the, uh, God, the EGR stuff. I think that's what it is. Yeah, EGR stuff right here, this little pump area. Uh, gonna remove that, so we'll get that out of the program in this. And then also the secondary cat. So we gotta get that programmed out as well. So that'll go in the ECU tune. I'm gonna send the whole wiring harness out to them to have them do it. Figured I'll have the pros do it, make it super clean. Could do it myself, you guys can do it yourself if you want to, comparing the two wiring diagrams. However, I just figured uh, I wanna keep this car OBD2. So really all I'll have to do on the wiring harness is just change out to a brown sensor for the um, E30, which I already have. That one's actually threaded. I got that from Race German, so check that dude out if you need one of those. We'll thread that in later on, or maybe I'll do that today, I don't know. But we're gonna go ahead and remove the wiring harness. So I figure I'll kinda go step by step, removing the wiring harness. That way we can remember where things go. We'll have it on video. And just so you guys are kind of aware as well. First off, I want to get this exhaust gas recirculation stuff off of here. Ooh. The whole stud came out, but you gotta love those California cars. Came off nice and easy. These little guys right here, what I'm gonna try to do is just chop those off and we're gonna fill these up with weld here in the hole, here and here. Then we can bolt those back on, they'll basically be plated off. Go ahead and make those little adapters later on. Now, I'm not 100% sure if they need the coil pack stuff, but I'll go ahead and take that stuff off just because it's not that difficult to do. As far as all the coil packs go, you just kind of pull up on this area and the plug just kind of comes out of here. No big deal. I don't know if they have to remove a wire in here. I assume not, but it's one of those things where I want to ship it out once, so why not give them the uh, whole freaking loom? You can get the OBD-1 harness from like an E36 and from like an M50 or whatever, and you can do that swap you just need a red label DME. Yeah, you can you can do it that way. I wanna do OBD2 because of the fact of diagnostics. So I'm thinking, you know, if anything goes wrong, it is so much easier to diagnose with OBD2 because you got the computer telling you what the heck is wrong and what sensor is not working or what's giving you a fault. So that just sounds a lot easier to me. This will be my first swap on an E30. You know, I just think that'll make life just just that much more simple our ground on the last little wire just kind of keep that in mind those grounds will have to be hooked up later on get all these little bolts out of here go ahead and just pull all the plugs here these ones don't look as melted as that one uh, this one looks good number four has a bit of meltage right here that one has a Allen I need to take out. This one looks pretty good too. This number five has an Allen. Not really sure why that has an Allen on it. If that's normal, let me know if someone just had that bolt so I don't lose any of my bolts. Go ahead and just screw these back in here so we don't lose them. I always like to do that if possible. Feel that, you know, you can obviously do the plastic baggie method, but if you can just put it right back in the hole after you take it off, that's obviously the best visual because you're, you know, when you go ahead and put it back on, it's going to be right back to where we were. So here is the harness for the um, coil packs. So I'll put that in a box along with the ECU. I'm going to take off this little fuel rail cover right here. Now, if you guys are missing these, apparently you can order these from BMW. They cost a couple bucks. Definitely makes the finish of this top piece look, well, finished once we kind of take the cover off i'm just going to kind of 
click this down as well so we know exactly where that goes. That way it doesn't fall off. We'll get this little top fuel rail cover off. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna mark these banks. So I'm gonna mark this guy with the green, this guy with pink. Little connectors for the O2s. They just pop out of here. Green connector in there. Let's actually see. Kind of just runs down here right next to the valve cover. It's right around here in this little metal piece flicks out down so that little bracket you gotta have to weave it through that sorry if this video is extra long or extra boring guys i want to make this as detailed as possible for you guys so now there's two little hooks down here right off the engine block <laughs> come to think about it i don't even know why i'm actually taking these off because these are these are connected so Anyways, if you have to take your O2s, that's the way they route. We're gonna shove them right back in there. The ones we actually need to get off are not these, but this whole situation here. This is everything for the fuel injectors. I'm gonna take this little cover off and we'll see if we have to unclip anything there. I'm gonna set these somewhere where I don't lose them. They're just a good way to strap down those O2 sensors. Be gentle to this stuff. You may have some brittle old plastic. This is my original S52 harness that I'm gonna be taking off of the car. You know, you don't wanna screw any of this up. I do think if you wanna film this yourself, that way you have reference for yourself, that might be a good idea, just in case I skip anything. So what you guys want, I try to do pretty detailed breakdown videos of uh, installs so you guys can follow along as well as possible. That's what I'm trying to do here for you, so. There is a little metal clip on the front of the fuel injector, kind of goes right around here. You just kind of have to slide that back and then it'll pop out. It's been slacking guys, I'm sorry. I've been doing stuff with the uh, M4, been doing stuff with the S3. Fun new toys, kind of put some stuff on the back burner sometimes. So. I pretty much have that harness off now. This little guy right here, I'm gonna disconnect. We're pressing that one down. That's gonna slide out there. I have a labeler over here, so I'm going to, probably just gonna mark this real quick and just say, no, I'm not even gonna label that. That's actually for my Vanos. I didn't, didn't even notice right there. That's for my Vanos pump, so. You got your VTEC right there. Leave that one hooked up. Now this guy has a little connection here. I mean, most of these are pretty self-explanatory, really. Because they're gonna go where they're kinda gonna go. It has a connection over here, not used. Don't know why, it's it's not used. So this one over on this side, that plug, not used. Well, maybe that goes into another plug that I have chilling, but unplug that, so I don't know what that does. Now we're gonna talk about this guy. Now I got the, uh, the DME or the ECU hookup right here, right? Uh, we got that diagnostic port right here for the OBD2. This one right here, this connector, you will notice that that one connects into coil packs, so that's the one that get you live for the coil pack area. This whole situation will be up on the dash. You can kind of see it goes to that sort of area over here on the left hand side. As far as this stuff goes, um, I'm not totally sure. Not totally sure what this guy does. Not totally sure what this guy does. Researching these would obviously help. We got three connections right here as well. Um, if these go away, they go away. If I'm gonna use them, I guess they will uh, keep them. So that's why I would have liked to have taken this motor out of the car itself. And I mean, I could do a little bit more research, but whatevs. Looks like we have a hot wire right here. This could be a ground. I don't know. I'm gonna say, I don't know what this does. I wanna say this goes to some sort of on key switch, but I don't remember. Uh, we have a couple of relays here as well, so we're just gonna leave those chilling. If those disappear, they disappear. I don't know. So this one right here is the starter. This is like the hot. I'm gonna assume this is kind of a, a constant hot right here for the starter motor, and then we're gonna have, you know, our uh, our stator and our ignition probably over here on the other spot to actually engage the starter motor, but. We'll get that off right now, I guess. We got two hoses right here. These are for the uh, fuel rail. So I need to label these. Um, this is the back one and this is the front. I gotta figure out which one is the incoming and which one is the return. I wanna see the back's the incoming, but I'm going to have to uh, double check on that for sure. Put these up backwards, you're not gonna have proper fuel pressure and the car's not gonna run. Great time to do a new starter motor. I may do that that way. I don't run into issues down the line. It looks like the real hard pain in the ass part is 
actually like rehooking up the wiring if you were to do it. I think taking it out of the actual bell housing won't even be the hardest part. I think that hooking the wires back up would be the hard part. So we're gonna label all of this stuff. I don't really want to. Um, doesn't really sound awfully fun to me. 13 mil on the starter, in case you guys are wondering, and it's simple to get off because why would it be? Why would it be easy? Obviously, if this is connected to the car, you're gonna want to uh, disconnect the battery or else you're gonna make some freaking sparks here. Starter, big red, and a big hole on it. So that's the one we're gonna use for that. 10 mil on this little pink side of the starter motor. So just so you guys are wondering what size that is, 10 millimeter, eight millimeter instead of uh, G like for green. It might just be a better way. Mark it towards the uh, side of the nut size of the nut, I think that would. Now we got a little guy with a brown, black, and white wire right here. Crankshaft position sensor, CSPS, I don't know. Zip tie back on that. Yellow on the inside, goes right back to the back here. I'm gonna say throttle body position sensor. This guy right here, that looks like what it is to me. Why would I say that? It's because it's on il throttle body. That one's kind of routed down. Underneath here, I want to be nice about it. Again, I need to put it through that little hole there so it has that little click-in connection. Now there are some connectors down underneath here. Uh, we're gonna see if we can get to those without taking off the intake manifold. I'm not totally set on the M50 manifold um, just due to the fact that it does take away a little bit of low-end torque. Um, and because I will be autocrossing the car and tracking the car, some of that low end torque kind of might be nice, but if you put an M50 manifold on this, you will get more higher RPM horsepower. So, eh, trade off, you know, I don't know, we'll see. So now down in here, there are a few areas where we got some zip ties. I'll try to cut those without snipping any wires. It has a nice little channel that it sits in right here. It's got this like little metal channel right here. Sorry guys, if you can't see this very good, but if you have the motor in front of you, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I'm thinking it's gonna be easier to take the intake manifold off. Yeah, let's stop fighting it. Uh, I see a couple extra wires down there. I don't think that it's going to be fun to uh, try to keep it on. So it looks like it's gonna be an 11 millimeter for the intake manifold. Start taking Bunch of nuts for that. We got a couple more things up in the front. So I have another connector right down here below the throttle body. I haven't looked up what it is. We're gonna disconnect it and we are gonna call it below throttle body because that seems like something easy to uh, to call it. I have a back little piece of tubing. I wanna say that this is like some coolant that flows through here to help heat up the throttle body for cold start. What that's for, that's kind of something like I have on my E30. Also like a little connection right here, this line, I think this is for your fuel economy, your like vacuum line, because that's hooked up to uh, engine vacuum. So you, you know, tell what kind of gas mileage you're getting or whatever. That already looked like it was kind of in a longer harness. So I'm gonna assume that's what that is. Kind of chop this off of the harness all over. Right down in this area, I got another one. This is my, pretty sure, I'm gonna call that my oil pressure because it's connected to this little guy right here. And uh, we'll label that oil pressure sensor. So at least I know where that goes back to. As far as the last wire goes for me, it's a 10 millimeter on the alternator. I just called it the uh, voltage wire. I don't know if that one like tells the ammeter how much voltage is getting, is like happening or what we got going on there. But that's what I'm gonna guess. Or it's for the ECU to know what like the, voltages or something maybe to tell the alternator kick on actually but i think this one's internally regulated because it only really only really has one wire i mean yes it's got the second one there but it's my last wire for all of this so now wiring harness is out yeah okay so now i just gotta ship this thing out and uh get it fixed up